All right, let me test it. Test it out. So she might go ahead and put up the agenda. For the website, put up the agenda. It's working now. Oh, yeah. that one I just saw you. Yeah. 
Okay, can I uh, call our special session order? Welcome everybody to this meeting. This is a discussion meeting. I have a number of items that the uh, board needs to uh, prepare for and to put some action on in preparation for our uh, August 25th board meeting. Uh, Ms. Hicks, can I get a Roll call vote and approval of the agenda. Someone make that motion, please, in a second, and then a roll call vote. I'll second that. Okay. Ms. Berger? Aye. Ms. Kendrick? Aye. Ms. Wright? Aye. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Ms. Colvin? Aye. Ms. Graves? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Aye. Heard 5 0. Uh, okay. Um, board development uh, discussion. The last time we uh, left off with some additional structure, uh, according to our policy, the superintendent presides over until we establish the board leadership and also the uh, establish the treasurer and board secretary. First item is um, president um, of the school board open for discussion. Um, I will make a motion on the co presidency. Um, I would like to nominate the and Coleman to co presidents. I would second that. Discussion? Have we received any counsel on that from either Nancy or some sort of authority on the co presidency? Yes. That is. Okay. Why don't you yes, I know that board members had asked uh, previously about that, and I did consult with um, MSBA and the lawyer, and I have uh, some information. And I won't read the whole thing, but I'll highlight some of the uh, pieces here. So it starts off by saying uh, this is an unusual arrangement that we're pursuing here. And under section 162.201, subsequent two states that the board shall organize by election of the president and vice president. Clearly, the legislature only anticipated a single president and a single vice president. To my knowledge, other districts have not done this. So she uh, um, talked about some of the things I will go through. You guys know the history, we've been through it. And through, at the end of the day, she talks about um, this is not an ideal situation we're in because we've already passed our legislative timelines and we're missing out of other uh, timelines. And it's under the board's purview to decide how they want to do the leadership structure. The board could go with an ultimate structure if they don't want to follow that structure. My recommendation last time, or <laughs> could be uh, satisfied in the traditional role of president, vice president, that they go with an interim but for a temporary co presidency until you have a discussion around the board vacancy, the that vacancy. And then you can have a meeting to reorganize and go back to the traditional structure. So that is the, um, the proposal that was put on the table. And it sounds like board members are willing to uh, take that as consent. Uh, um, I thought that was an opportunity for the board to come together and come to agreement on something in terms of how to move forward. So that's basically the only thing. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> I would like to add in there um, the Pacific Island and that two months. Hopefully, by the end of that, I'm sorry, the first one. So it sounds like you're making a friendly amendment to uh, Director White's uh, co question motion, right? So I'm, I'm going to try to paraphrase it. This is to try to catch it, and then I'm going to have to get uh, Director White to see if he's open to that friendly amendment or not. Okay. Um, what I'm hearing is that we have a co presidency for a period of two months to the time frame to go through the board vacancy process. So we have what 30 day I'm we have 30 day most of the period generally speaking for the vacancy about two weeks. So yeah. no. two months. Two months and years of the period. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the chair will recognize our attorney fields and comments on <laughs> sorry. Um I you know. Um, I look at this as a question. I do look at this as a question. Um, I do never going to get me to get that issue. That's pretty clear. The reality is that you're not going to, you're not likely to be two boards, but what you're about to do is really not. Yeah, I think we'll go to Hickman Mill School District. We will find that the school board of this district has been in turmoil for many years. And if I recollect it, maybe since 2014. And I look at this as a way start that healing process and to provide leadership and leadership in a positive constructive manner and to develop trust amongst the board and I, that's my opinion. Uh, we'll give some pause and we're discussing anyone else wants to comment. I just see it as a way to move forward right now um, to provide some leadership so that we can move forward. And in the meantime, this is just for two months, we can get the seventh member on board and be organized and have a person vice president. Right now, we're at standstill. We can't move forward. But we stand still. And that's not what my man for. Any other comments, discussion? I, I'll just reiterate what Ms. Coleman said. Two 
Burger? Aye. Ms. Kendrick? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Ms. Townsend? Aye. Ms. Graves? Absent. Ms. Harris? Five old. I move that um, we appoint Ms. Dix as the board secretary. Second. Ms. Berger? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Ms. Kendrick? Aye. Mr. Townsend? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Ms. Graves? Absent, pass 5 -0. Now a motion to put MSBA delegate. I'd like to nominate Ann Coleman as our MSBA delegate. Is she with that? I did not. You can move on it, but you don't have to. You had a nomination. Okay. I had a second. I was doing consent to this nomination. So I would say you can go up the candidate for this family by next week after that nomination. You guys ready? Ms. Berger? No. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Ms. Kendrick? Aye. Mr. Townsend? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Ms. Graves Epson, Cass 5 0. 
Madam, Madam Chair, can I have some comments on this board vacancy piece before the board proceeds? Yes. Uh, we do have a policy that gives guidance around the board vacancy. I know the board has deliberated over this the last few months is a critical stage. I would um, recommend to the board that you have a discussion around criteria for board candidates looking for before you even put anything out. That way, the board will have consensus around what we're looking for, and then when it's time for selection, you can use the criteria to determine, uh, you know, who's the best candidate to fit the criteria. But I would certainly uh, encourage the board to follow the full extent of the policy uh, right to the board. Um, we have no one. We have no one. We have to post the vacancy first. Even though we put criteria, people outside of it should be able to apply. Oh, yeah. As you were talking I want to make it clear that if anybody that <laughs> wants to apply can apply. Even if they feel that absolutely they don't fit in our criteria, they have a right to apply as long as they're and I just uh, my, my criteria the criteria I'm talking about, I'm talking about the board having a discussion around that type of individual. This is not for the post, the posting will be open to the public. And I, that criteria has to do with the quality expectations being a candidate that they have to fit into that to go to that. But the board, because I you know what, and I'll just put it out there. Sometimes when it gets in the elections, it becomes personalized, right? So instead of saying, no, I want this person, that person, the board, I think it would be encouraged for the board to have a conversation around the type of individual that they feel will help continue the harmony that they're trying to build and, and give some contribution to uh, the board to support the district. Before we put the posting out, at least have an idea of the type of individuals that um, so when we go back to the once we get applicants. And go back to the conversation discussion and use that as a reference point in terms of decision making. And then no one kind of feels like, oh, then we do not have to the neighbor or somebody this or whatever it is. That was just my suggestion. So we can take it. Uh, I think we need to make sure that we have to put on some of the TV six of Obviously, some of cares about the kids, but I don't think anybody's going to apply to the school board that doesn't care about the kids. Experience. Experience. I mean, experience on the Experience on the board for on the past member, whether it's 20 years or more. Uh, on, on any other board, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a school board, a previous school board member. They served on PTA, PTA, or because they already have some involvement in the district that actually make sure that we see this Well, I was thinking about even in the community because you know the district is you know a leader in the community. So, and one of the things that um, I've been thinking about and talking about is our board. We're pretty representative of male, female, old, younger, black, and white, but we have no Hispanic members. And our district now is has a large Hispanic population, you know. So I would like to see our posting go into the Kansas City Hispanic newspaper, and also maybe the Paul. I know before we put it in some newspaper that I've never heard of in my life, and I have to think, well, who in the world gets that paper? And in the the Telegraph, it was posted the same day it was due. So we also need to be um, aware of when the papers come out. 
I just, yeah, I would agree that we need to find a circuit like this so we can get um, not just the same people who are along with you applied before, but also try and get somebody involved who maybe doesn't, I mean, might not have experience, but might bring something you need to the table too. I mean, experience is great, but we also have to, I mean, Fresh ideas with this board might. Any, any other discussion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll clean, once it's all done, we'll clean it up and we just try to process it. We'll bring it back. And you'll have an opportunity to refine it as well, too, right? Some stuff that we'll pick it off today. I thought it would be a healthy conversation. Just uh, more of a reaction to that. Uh, and another thing, also, that uh, following our policy as well is to uh, make sure that we interview the candidates. That we're actually speaking to the candidates and not just like, uh, no chemical nature or oh. you know, to look at resumes and pretty much tell, but actually just speaking to that person is, is the key. So definitely following our policy posted in uh, those papers that were suggested as well as uh, in Spanish as well. And uh, what other, other languages that we have that attend our district so that all parents or all community members can have an opportunity to apply. Uh, maybe you need to specify being bilingual. That might be also being that bilingual. But so that the path moving forward. Yeah. And another thing might be is that they could plan on um, running for school board. Not, not that they're coming into this with the mindset. Oh, it's just from you know October until April that that they want to be committed to the students in the district, and so this is you know it's a temporary, but they're also interested in applying for election and become permanent seats. I guess in some of the stuff you're talking about, if you're organized, they come in the evening protests, right? Right, and you actually talk to people, mm -hmm. see what they're. So okay, then we uh, I'll make a recommendation that uh, staff will review the policy and communicate something to the board next week in terms of process and timeline. Inclusive of everything you said, that thing I heard of the inclusion piece and the distribution. There are five stages in our process. So the first one is that notification process. How we do that, then there's going to be interview phases in terms of the selection process. How you select, and then of course finally the swearing in. So we'll the staff will look at it and we'll send uh, something to the board uh, just for review. We can't comment back on it because we need it. But then we'll we'll bring it to the um, the board meeting. We're going to, I guess, there should be a motion that we should post the vacancy as prescribed in policy, policy BB-1. 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 And just for clarification, so once we receive the wording from staff, then it's presented at the next board meeting. And then we well, we can, we can, well, because we don't have an interim, we can set a draft to even view it. So at the board meeting, we can have a discussion and then finalize. Hopefully, we may not have to speak to it or whatever. We'll get the timeline of that later with more flexibility. The board often we can do the work, but the board often take a look at it and we can make some changes on the future. Okay. 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 Okay.
I just worry with waiting until this is for a two month timeline on our progressive CD case or
Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, that one and then the evening time before I work. So I would say that we go ahead with Monday and then we'll do another one later on. We'll have a more progress of it. Okay, we'll do it in the evening. People can go out to work. And make sure we get more it's only two of us to work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I guess you want like, like, uh, Brandon. <laughs> I say I definitely can't go to. I can't skip that. <laughs> but I, and I also will say that uh, in the fall, um, I will also put something out for our mutual bus for school visits. But I know the people who are working on it, it's going to be difficult to see in action. But um, think about that. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Ms. Kendrick? Aye. Ms. Berger? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Ms. Grace is absent. Ms. Margo? Yeah, they are. 